Welcome to the 2022 Maui County Candidate Interviews. Today we have Jordan Hawker, who is running for Upcountry County Council. Jordan, welcome. Nice to have you here with us. Uh, Thank I wanted you so to much for having me. I wanted to ask just a, a general question about your background and why you feel qualified to run for this really important office of county council. Oh, and by the way, I just want to mention that all of you who are listening, this is uh, county council is voting for all of the county, for all the districts throughout our county. So everyone has an opportunity to vote for these candidates running for county council. So just go ahead, Jordan, if you could answer that question that I had. Thank you. All right. Yes. So my Hawker, I'm an upcountry resident. Um, and, you know, I'm last election I had saw when I was voting that there was no competition for this seat. Um, and I said to myself, someone should probably run against the incumbent. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm not the kind of person who waits around for other people to step in to do things. So I figured, why not me? Um, my work is mainly in grassroots activi uh, activism and community organizing. I'm also a sustainable science management major at UH Maui College. So I'm very passionate about finding solutions within local government and policy that will help sustain us into the future. Um, during the pandemic, I used the access uh, through Blue Jeans meetings to attend as many county council and committee meetings as possible to really get an idea of what was going on, where we were at, um, and the work that was being done. And as I like to say, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and I think that I'm up for the challenge as well as my background in research means that if there's not an easy solution, I'm gonna seek it out. You know, I'm gonna find everything that's going into an issue and, and try to find the best path forward. So that's why I'm running for the upcountry seat. Jordan, uh, you mentioned that you've had background in doing specific projects and working on uh, environmental issues or things of concern. What are those some of the specific things that you've done in the past that deals with everything from environmental things to civic types of activities? Yeah, I have a great example of, of environmentalism and an overlap within uh, civic engagement. Um, over the pandemic, when there were certain cuts made to county services, when we were shut down, um, there's a, the, you might be familiar with the dump road, uh, which is Pulehu Road. And when we had our shutdown, the amount of dumped garbage that ended up on the side of that road uh, just increased exponentially to the point where it absolutely could not be ignored. Um, and it, you know, it got me thinking, what can we do about this? And I was lucky enough to, you know, be talking to my partner, like, we got to do something, something needs to be done. At the very least, we have to get the rubbish off the road. Um, and I was lucky enough to come across a, a posting on an app called Nextdoor, which is meant to connect neighbors. And, you know, upcountry, we kind of live far away from each other, even though we're all in the same community. Um, and I had seen someone saying, hey, does anybody else notice this problem? Uh, my associate, Mark White. And it, it sort of snowballed from there and that we had other people who wanted to come together and we just started cleaning up the road once a month. And it got us talking about waste streams and why certain things end up on the side of the road like appliances and tires. Um, and in the early days of that project, we were, we're about at about a uh, little over a year now that we've been cleaning up the side of Palehu Road once a month. Um, and tires were like a huge thing. You know, we were paying out of pocket, sometimes a couple hundred dollars every single month to address 12 plus tires we would find. And I looked at the, so I said, okay, surely the county has resources for recycling these tires, right? Surely there's a place. And what I had found was actually the flyer that the county was putting out, the number for EH International, which is the place you recycle tires here in Maui County, uh, there was a typo. And so it was actually wrong. <laughs> um, and I was like, well, no wonder no one knows where to take these tires because when you call it, you get a, this number is no longer in service. Um, so we were able to, you know, reach out to the Office of Environmental Management and get that corrected. 
And then through that, we were able to bring more community partners in. We had Pukulani Superette as one of our small business sponsors. And so they would help us uh, sponsor our recycling fees. And then we actually got partnered, you know, because we went to the county and said, hey, how could we get help with this project? And um, the way that the county was set up, we got a lot of, well, we don't know. <laughs> um, and I said, okay, well, who's already getting, who's already getting funds from the county to be able to help with this kind of issue? And I had found out that uh, Malama Maui Nui, uh, which was formerly Community Work Day, receives a grant from the county. And um, I was sort of our data coordinator in that the amount of trash we pulled off the road, I would report to them and then they would help us in exchange with things like pickers and trash bags and, um, and other things. And that partnership eventually grew to the point where they come down to the road, they help us um, take even more than we could before because we were just loading up the back of our pickup trucks and taking them to the dump, you know, on uh, purely a volunteer position. So it was a great juxtaposition of a small community project that then, you know, we went to the county and didn't necessarily find the solutions we were working for, but we realized we could we could make a community partnership um, and get even more off of the road. So every month it's it's thousands of pounds of dumped garbage on the side of Palehu Road. Um, and it gets me further thinking how we can, as a county, pay more attention to our waste streams and the amount of waste that we're bringing here um, and where it's supposed to go. Some of these things have no recycling, uh, they have no place to take them, you know? Uh, so that's, it's a really great example that's pretty close to my heart and, and kind of weaves in and out of community service and, and civic engagement. Well, thank you. That is a very good example of that for sure. Uh, and you're next and fifth Kathleen is next. Welcome, Jordan. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, you mentioned that one of your um, interests is uh, environmentalism, and I was w wondering, what kind of commissions do you see yourself serving on uh, in the council? Mm, interesting. That's a great question. Um, I, you know, the first one I, I, that comes to mind, which isn't necessarily what people would expect to be tied to environmentalism um, would be our infrastructure and transportation. Um, we clearly have a lot of congestion in that area, but it also is an area that I feel like we're missing the opportunity to either use carbon neutral fuels um, and really promote that or um, improve our electric infrastructure. You know, with the cost of oil being very high right now um, and the cost of gasoline. You know, I think that there are ways that Maui County could be managing its infrastructure and coming up with better ideas for getting combustion vehicles off of the road and increasing our public transportation. Um, so I think a lot about uh, the level of emissions that we're putting out here in, in Maui County and, and how that's one affecting our commute and our quality of life and then the quality of our environment as well. So is that uh, any other ways to reduce traffic congestions that you, congestion that you can see uh, other than public transportation and uh, getting some of these heavy <laughs> um, vehicles off the road, polluting vehicles? That, I mean, what, <clears throat> what do you see as other solutions? Yeah, I would like to see, I mean, I've mostly thought about this in public transportation because I have previously lived in areas that had great public transportation to the point where you didn't necessarily need a car to live your life. And here in Maui County, we really, we really do. Um, living up country, there aren't any, there aren't any options, you know. So we really can't get off of that, that crutch that we're on, so to speak. Um, I'd also like to see in increasing our public transportation infrastructure, a way to have less rental cars be a necessity, meaning we have these sort of streamlined areas for our visitors to be able to be transported from one place to the other. 
um, you know, our largest contributor to fossil fuels uh, emissions here, because we have one of the highest imprints or the highest like per capita um, impacts when it comes to fossil fuels. And that is mainly due to jet fuel. And so that that issue um, of how many flights we have coming in and, and the impact on how much each resident here in Maui County bears that burden is a much more complicated question that I would have to um, I'd have to vet a little more. But I really do think that improving our public transportation infrastructure, finding ways to either run those electrically or on our carbon neutral fuel is is a, a step in the right direction. Okay, great. Yeah, I think in my understanding, the buses only go as far up as Pukalani, the public transportation. We have one bus that does run out to where I live. Um, and it it turns around about, I think, either Keokea or the Hawaiian homes up here. But yeah, it's just it's just one. <laughs> <laughs> With not very frequent either. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much for that. Thank you, Anne. Next, we'll have Mark Joyner. Last questions. Okay, aloha, uh, Jordan. Um, good to see you. I uh, wanted to um, just ask a, a couple of questions along the lines of um, what your solution would be or what your uh, thinking is in terms of our uh, homeless situation here on Maui. It's a great question and it's super close to my heart. Um, I work in, in homeless advocacy and I think um, it's such a big question because there's so many different dynamics. Um, but I think meeting people, more services that meet people exactly where they're at. Right now, we have a lot of our funding coming from a federal program called Housing First. And there's really an emphasis on getting people shelter that is considered, you know, like signing a lease. Um, and we've seen in the state that some of the most successful uh, and rehabilitating healing solutions for our houseless population is more along the lines of managed encampment, meeting them where they're at, giving them services that they need. Because our current model right now is we just, it's a dispersal model. It's either you get into housing and you're able to jump through all the hoops that certain services offer. Um, and even then the cost of housing is so high, we're running into that system not really working the way that it was designed to work um, and meeting people where they're at. We're in a time of crisis. The pandemic increased our amount of homelessness here. So I think it's about, you know, as a county trying to restore dignity to people and giving them something to be proud of. Um, and our advocacy group did work at um, the sweep down at Amala Place that happened back in September, 2021. And some of us did take uh, a trip over to Pu'uhonua Owayanai, which is a really great example of homeless-led and, and really uh, houseless thriving um, to where, you know, there are, there are work requirements. There are things that you have to give back to the community that you're in. But, you know, right now we just have these little mobile units providing people with showers, providing people with haircuts. And I think that we need to have more centralized locations for people to be, because that will be easier for those wraparound services to access people. Because right now we move people from one place to another. They might've been getting services through, you know, a, a county funded program, but if we can't find them, then it's a lot harder for them to seek those services. And so, um, you know, I think we really need to shift away in practice from you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And instead saying there's a reason this person isn't drinking. And that's that's what we need to focus on. Um, and I think that pre-pandemic, it was easy to say, well, people are lazy or people have problems and they just don't want to get better. But I saw so many hardworking people end up living out of their cars on the side of the road that I just, I, I don't believe in that narrative. And I think that there's enough evidence to prove that it, there's a lot more going on here. We're in a perfect storm. So I, I think that um, there was a recent appropriation uh, made by Kelly King and the council for $200,000 for a parking lot that would provide, provide services. And I think that, you know, we can even go 
beyond that and, and find what would make people who are experiencing homelessness feel cared for and what would help them have pride in the things that they do. Um, and if you haven't looked into Pu'uhonua o Waianae, it's a really beautiful example of that. So I'd like to see that happening in Maui County. Okay, great. Um, well, that's a, a very thorough answer to uh, a much more complex uh, question than uh, I, I posed to begin with. <laughs> so thank you very much. Great. Uh, next we'll have Alan Lloyd. Hi, Jordan. And uh, I, um, I have a question that I ask every candidate and um, it's based on the theme that one job is enough. So what do you think the minimum wage should be this year in 2022? And there's a follow-up question after that. Okay, so um, according to the, the state study um, and according to the ALICE project, uh, it should be right now a minimum of $18 an hour for people without dependents and for people with dependents, for two bread earners, minimum, bare minimum, that's just scraping by, is $20 an hour. For one bread winner, it, one bread winner, it should be about 40. And the study that I'm actually quoting is a couple years old at this point. So it should be even a couple dollars more than what I'm saying. <laughs> um, yeah, we're we're in a situation where the, the general wages really aren't meeting our cost of living. Um, so they do need to be much higher than they are right now. Okay. And then my next question is, would you work at the county level to increase the minimum wage or increase the timeline that the state has set to get to $18 an hour, which is their timeline is by 2028. Would you speed up that timeline so we get to 18 or 20 or whatever? in a faster way? Yeah, that's a complicated question because, you know, Maui County itself is limited by what we can regulate and, and have happen. So um, it's really, it's within the state's purview more to regulate what businesses do. Um, however, if we can't directly within Maui County pass an ordinance that raises minimum wage, um, for say people who have more than a hundred employees, what we can do is begin to address uh, what I see is a common excuse as to why we can't raise minimum wage, which is that small businesses can't handle it. And we can, um, I think, offer coaching and a different perspective for small businesses to see that labor is actually within their scope of of providing a higher wage for, uh, and finding out ways to to support them in that. Um, one of my favorite examples is a small business that I have already mentioned, and I have a lot of respect for what they're doing, but um, Pukulani Superet, which is here upcountry, just sort of released on their social media that they're bumping everybody up in their company to $18 an hour, um, way ahead of that 2028 schedule. Um, and really what, it, what, what I feel it comes down to is when you're making a business plan and you're going to a bank, to get a loan for your business plan, labor should be in, included, very much so included in that in that uh, cost of labor in that business plan. Um, and so providing coaching and awareness for smaller businesses that are worried about the impact of labor, um, I think may be the way that, that the county could, could do that. Um, because I think we have limitations on what we can do here in terms of telling businesses what they have to pay versus the state. Uh, and sorry, I have another follow-up question. Um, we just uh, we interviewed Gabe Johnson, and he put in the budget this year for um, agencies during the summer that contract with the county that they pay their workers fifteen dollars an hour uh, this summer instead of the minimum. So, would you see yourself um, interested in doing that as a council representative? And where you have uh, people who, businesses that contract with the county and ensuring that those workers get paid higher wages. Yeah, that's a really smart workaround. 
I mean, that's a, I think that is an appropriate use of, of county oversight and, and county funds. You know, if we're giving contracts to businesses, then we should make sure that their workers are taken care of. Yeah. OK, great. Thank you. Mr. Douglas will be next. Hi, uh, Jordan. Um, you're a deep thinker. What would you do in the world of managing tourism? Because we're shifting from the time of promoting tourism to like managing tourism and getting the type of tourism that works for the, for the people in the Aina. What would be your ideas of how to manage tourism? I love this question. It's such a big question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there's a, oh my, what would I do? Um, well, one, I would probably shift a lot of the funds that we appropriate to promoting Maui County to a different area uh, as, a, as a first step. I, I don't think that we need to, Maui County is the number one destination on TripAdvisor. The entire world knows that we're here. We don't really need to self-promote, um, I think, to, to any degree necessarily. Um, when you look, when you go and search Maui, there are hundreds, if not thousands of blogs telling you where to go, what to do, um, when to do it, how much it costs. You know, we have plenty of people doing promotion for free simply to promote their own businesses. Um, so that would be, you know, I don't think that our Maui Tourism Authority needs uh, a whole lot of funding uh, to be able to uh, do what, what it needs to do. Um, I would have to think more about what we can do. You know, I, I definitely uh, supported and have supported the visitor accommodation moratorium and then the upcoming legislature that I think is in the planning department currently to um, put a cap on visitor accommodations within uh, transient and hotel districts. I think that's a good, uh, limiting our amount of accommodations is a good way to uh, cap the amount of people. You know, I think that possibly even shifting it to, you know, if you can't find it at one point in the year, then you need to look elsewhere. Um, but it's difficult because we cannot stop people from coming here. If anybody could get on a plane and come here and just be here. Um, so I, I think it's a it's a dynamic issue. We have to sit hit on all sides. Um, and I think that accommodations and and reappropriating funds for promotion are are the two two big ones. Um, I also would like to see there be something within the county where we are actually managing and keeping track of our short term vacation rentals and things like Airbnb. Um, I'd like to see either a position or a department that is meant to track down people within Maui County that aren't necessarily following the rules, you know, um, that are giving people unauthorized places to stay and, and that sort of thing. So it's an issue I think about constantly and, and we have our, a very unique set of limitations. So it's, it's something I will continue to work on. Great answer. Thank you. Uh, the other one thing is anybody in the county council can just sit back and vote on things. But what really gets the legislator is what 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 they champion, what they put forward, what they put their energy and mana into creating. Mm -hmm. And I know your incumbent hasn't done much. Uh, so what would be your three favorite projects to champion if you're elected to the Maui County Council? Absolutely. Um, so. The first one is is in line with what Mark had asked me about. I want to find ways for dignity to be restored to our houseless residents. I would push managed encampments. Um, I would push a, a, a stop to sweeps specifically um, and make sure that within our affordable housing, we're making appropriations for people who for me, it's housing for all. It's not just housing for people who can work and afford it. Because if we have that narrow scope, then people are going to end up on the streets through no fault of their own. Uh, people who become disabled, people who end up, you know, experiencing a hardship. Um, so I would really find ways to make sure that we weren't further criminalizing homelessness uh, through roundabout means, even though there is no vagrancy ordinance. 
uh, that prevents being homeless here. Um, <clears throat> so that would be something that I would uh, definitely champion. And as far as uh, further things go, over tourism is always an issue. Um, I don't necessarily in this moment say this is the legislature I have in my mind on the deck ready to go. Um, but it would definitely be something that I would work on. The, the third issue is that I would really champion is trying to find either emergency funds or something to reforest large parts of West Maui and even up where I live up on the mountain above me and out further towards Kalpo. Um, as a sustainable science management major, we're not going to find some magical thing that's just brand spank and sparkly new um, that's going to solve all of our problems. But we have a lot of examples from history that we can draw from. Um, as our global temperature increases, we are already experiencing drought and decreased rainfall. If we're reforesting areas that were heavily hit by sugarcane and pineapple infrastructure in the past, and we're restoring the dry land forest there, which literally created its own weather, then we actually have a shot. I feel we would have more of a shot at maintaining our aquifer, at the very least replenishing our aquifer and not just completely continuing to drain our island. Like when I, when I look at the West Maui's and it's not hard, if you get in an airplane and you even fly to Oahu, you can see where our water is going and you can see where it isn't. And um, there's a very stark contrast. So uh, we know of species of plants that, and trees that thrive in a dry environment, that do create their own weather, that do transpire and give us more moisture and will, could have the potential to cool down our island a bit and just give us a little, a little room, you know? And I'm really, it's a, a far in the future plan because, you know, um, a giant ulu tree or like dry land forest doesn't just pop up overnight. Um, but that's really, when I think about working together for our future generations, it's that kind, those kinds of projects that we really need to get focused on because we have a finite amount of water. We have a finite amount of land. And even if we weren't experiencing climate change, we have drastically altered the landscape that allows us to thrive here. So it's, that's my answer. That's my answer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Very good. Appreciate that. Uh, Jordan, I will ask the next question. And it has to do uh, about our utilities. Right mm -hmm. now, our Maui County residents, we pay the highest electrical rate in the state. Yet, uh, and, that's, and it's privately owned, uh, the whole generation and distribution of electricity. Mm -hmm. As compared to uh, Kauai, which is community-based and owned, uh, they pay the lowest rate by far. So what is your thoughts about moving from privately owned uh, uh, electricity to more public-based uh, use of utilities? I think that is the way of the future. Um, I think that having local energy hubs versus this large centralized hub, I don't think it's really doing us any favors. It's not doing us any favors in terms of emergency times when we have large portions of the grid go down, but really energy is one of those things that we cannot, much like water, we can't live without it at this point in time. You know, it is, it is tied to people's livelihoods. It is tied to my ability to eat, you know, um, we don't, if we don't have access to these things, um, then we're not thriving. We're not thriving. So uh, community community models and community owned, um, uh, especially when it comes to electric, is something that I'm very excited about. Uh, Maui County should be doing that already. We should have uh, energy resilient hubs. You know, I, I live in a very rural area, and back in December we got a massive storm. And it was one of the scariest things that I had experienced living up here. Um, but we were knocked out for about four days and then we didn't even have potable water for an entire month, you know, and part of that was because we're pushing it all the way out 
from a central location instead of finding ways to make that centralized. And I bring up water because there is a there's an intersection there between our energy and our water. Pumping water all the way out to where I live is one of the largest expenses and uh, and burner of at this point diesel fuel in Maui County. So part of the reason that we're paying such high amounts is because our water infrastructure is going all of these different places as well. So um, I think we should focus on community community owned, community managed, um, and less all in one place and more regional place based. Uh, as a follow-up to that uh, response, then, uh, certainly we're looking at uh, kind of a more of a home rule from what I'm hearing you say, from having it more be community-based and community-owned, community-operated. Uh, right now, the state has a tremendous amount of power over water and over our utilities and different things. Uh, mm -hmm. What is your thought and process of how the county council could move to have more home rule uh, than the way it's set up right now? Well, I don't know the uh, the actual technical process of how that would happen. Um, I do know that, you know, the county was in talks about uh, obtaining a water system in Nevaeha. Um, and I think it doesn't make any sense that in order to have access to our water, <laughs> that, that the state and the small board of people really, truly, you know, the board of land and natural resources when it comes to water permits is not a large body. It's not, um, it's like four to six people. I could be, could be incorrect there. Um, but that is to say, who knows better what we need in terms of water and energy even than us here. Um, so whatever can be done on a county level, I would fully support. Uh, the technical aspect and what can be done is something I would need to do more research on. Great, thank you. Next we'll have Anne. Okay, um, all right, Jordan. <laughs> kind of about private ownership as well. I was gonna ask you about your <clears throat> uh, views about uh, water rights. I know that we have these extended over and over renewed leases on water by these offshore corporations. And um, what do you think about, do you support the county um, asserting imminent domain over the EMI system, East Maui Irrigation, right? In order to administer the public trust water resource for um, the food security necessities of our community? That's a great question, Anne. And if that's the way it has to be done, then absolutely I support it. I mean, really, the the process that we're in right now is, uh, for lack of a better word, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, we have a lot of people who have fought a lot of really um, hard litigation and and really educated themselves very thoroughly on how to get water back. And you know, from my perspective um, as an SSM major. As much water is in the streams flowing from the high point to the shore uh, is the healthiest system that we could possibly have. That is aquifer infiltration from Malka to Makai. So whatever needs to be done to, to get control of that, I have thought about imminent domain. I'm like, why don't we just take it? You know, um, and it, it would be something that I haven't again, looked into the technical aspects of, but would be something that I support. Maui, Maui's water for Maui's residents makes a lot of sense. And, and technically, as far as legal status goes, that's how it should be. It is a public trust resource. So yeah, I would support something like that. Very good. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Anne. Mark is next. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, 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 something that came up in a conversation uh, with one of our last interviews was the whole business of recycling and uh, the fact that you know we're, we obviously live on a very small island. Um, there's places on the mainland that uh, actually has recycling pickup uh, for um, you know along with the usual trash day uh, that comes around, and I've never really been able to understand why we don't have something like that here. Um, I, 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 you know, there's an awful lot of people, my neighbors included, unfortunately, uh, that just throw everything in the trash, all the high fives, everything. And uh, 
I don't think that would happen if uh, because I'd, I'd I'd like to think that people are, you know, fairly um, community driven. Mm -hmm. uh, if we had some kind of situation in the county where we could have that, and uh, I don't know whether that would be built into the the waste management bill or uh, whether uh, you know the county could uh, start up start a project with that. Um, but regardless, um, that's what we're interested in. Yeah, I don't I don't know why as well that uh, uh, that doesn't exist. I mean, I think that it's probably because we went in the direction of um, localized recycling hubs. Uh, but for people who live a little more rurally and that recycling really builds up, builds up until you can get there, it, it does make sense for it to be picked up with rubbish. Um, and I would like to look into how how we could make that a reality here. Um, I'd also like to see, you know, the curbside composting, uh, like what is being spearheaded in in West Maui, being a, a more of a possibility throughout Maui County, um, because food waste contributes to a large amount of the methane that's coming off of our landfill, um, and so there is no. It, it literally could be turned into soil that could be used by local local farmers, um, compost that could be used by local farmers. And, you know, with recent global events, the cost of fertilizer has skyrocketed. Um, and so it, yeah, it, it makes sense to figure out why we're not doing that. Um, and, and we're on a small island, everything gets shipped in um, and we got to find places for it. So unless we're going to stop bringing certain stuff in, we need to we need to find out how we can do that better. OK, thank you. Thanks, Alan will be next. All right. Hi, Jordan. Um, so I have um, two questions. Uh, and I'm going to give an example on one. What are your uh, rents are out of control? We all know that um, rents are very high, and people are bunching up, and people are working multiple jobs to afford their rent. So, first, uh, what are your thoughts about residential rent control? And uh, second, uh, small businesses rent is either their first cost or their second cost. Uh, and what, so what are your thoughts about commercial rent control? Thank you. I think that rent control is something that's definitely needed. Um, I think that we don't have really any agencies or anything here that are advocating for tenants in general. Um, I am wondering what our scope within Maui County as county council um, what actions that we could take and possibly, um, you know, one of the things, because again, it, it can fall under business. Um, so it's, I have asked myself, you know, what can Maui County Council do in terms, because I personally support, support rent control. I think it should have happened. I mean, 10 years ago when we, we saw this sort of thing coming. Um, but I'm not familiar on, you know, policy-wise, what we can do. I think that um, one of the things that I am hopeful about looking into, at least with residential rent control, is that in the same way that we have zoning uh, requirements in terms of acreage as to how large of an ohana you can build on your uh, build on your on your lot, right? If you have a quarter of an acre, it can only be up to a certain amount of square footage. Um, maybe including incentives and in the amount that that is, is taxed uh, for lower rental things. So possibly, you know, giving functionally like a sliding scale between a bracket and saying, okay, if you charge this much for your rental, then this is the property tax break that you're going to get. Um, because, you know, I do think that, you know, when you're dealing with, with rentals in general, uh, which can be tied to the real estate industry, then it does get into regulating business. But I think that if it were, Sort of a zoning working around and we could give people incentives to charge less and make it even out for them um, that might be a win-win for the county and and property owners and then my follow-up question is in some counties and cities on the mainland um, there is um, 
a ban on evictions for families that have children in school so that kids don't have to change schools. Mm -hmm. Um, Would you support something like that? That does sound like a good idea. I mean, the displacement of our youth is something that, you know, as far as I know, the culture really cares about Kiki. So it would be something that I would be willing to look into. Absolutely. Um, Because I don't want to see our youth displaced during a time when they should be learning and gathering the skills that they need to be a part of our community. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. And Bruce will be next. Hi, Jordan. Um, We have a situation in Maui. We have all this agricultural land, but it's owned by one Canadian corporation. Uh, And there's not a lot of support for local farmers have a hard time making it and getting going. What would you do to support sustainable agriculture and food that would feed local population, not just for export? Yeah, uh, massive priority. Uh, smaller, smaller farmers, sustainable farmers, and resilience towards areas uh, in in specific areas in Aupuas uh, is is a huge concern of mine. Um, I would start off by asking sustainable farmers what they need and where they're they're encountering encountering um, their largest barriers for success, um, because that's really I. I have a hobby garden and I I help my neighbors out, but I'm not in that position of being uh, pitted against that Goliath, so to speak. Um, If there are ways that we can help small farmers, especially through the Maui Department of Agriculture, it is something that I want to want to see. I don't believe that monocropping and shoving all of our agriculture in one area is sustainable at all. It takes a large amount of water. Um, and I, I mean, you can see the dust is blowing in the wind, uh, you know, (laughs) so, so to speak. So, um, I would start off in asking small farmers what they need, what, what the County can do for them. Um, because I don't have all those answers in this moment. Uh, Bruce, you're on mute right now. What is the question we have not yet asked that you would like to answer? Give us the question and the answer of what you would like to speak for. Mm. It's like the one question I don't have an answer for. Um, Okay, let's see. Uh, mm. Yeah, what, what can be done to support our youth in staying here in Maui County? and developing pride here in Maui County. Um, it's a and big your one. answer is? <laughs> and my answer is uh, the county needs to start working harder for our youth. We need to start making sure that we are setting aside programs that are actually working with them. And a great example would be to pair up these sustainable farms and our youth with teaching programs um, and, and get them connected I think also um, in terms of finding ways to support education expansion and different forms of education um, Mm -hmm. that will allow, especially our middle schoolers and our high schoolers to take on a solution here in Maui County. So I don't know if that looks like a mentoring program through the county and bringing in partners from the community, Um, but we need to get our youth involved because we lose them during that time. I was a teenager once and I was lost, you know, and we have such a large breadth of issues that it's easy to look at it and just shut down, you know? And so I would, I would love to see community mentorship programs really supported by the County and finding ways to get these amazing minds here and keep them here, you know? Um, because we can't keep afford to we can't afford to keep losing uh, losing our minds to to either the mainland for education or due to housing crisis or or whatever you know we need to get them here and engaged. Thank you. Great, uh, Jordan. As the final question, then that we have for our interview, 
Is there anything that we've missed, any additional things or any uh, concluding statements that you'd like to make at this point in time? Yeah, I don't think there's anything that you folks missed. Uh, everything was very uh, broad things, broad things that um, I've been looking at. And, and so I appreciate that. Um, I, I would like to conclude in the fact that I strongly believe that local government should work for the people and that that should, the position is one of a public servant. It's not one of, we just sit around and yeah, either shoot down legislation and other people's ideas or uh, maintain the status quo. The reason that I am stepping into this position is not because I really am a super social person that enjoys putting myself out there uh, for scrutiny. It is because we need people stepping forward who know that the position for a council member is a public servant and that the, the will of the public needs to be upheld in that. So that's what I will. Thank you very much, Jordan, for this. And I just wanna remind all the people who are our voters here in Maui County that all of the voters throughout the entire county are able to vote for all of the county council members. So Jordan Hawker, who's running for upcountry, Maui County Council, thank you so much for this interview. Yeah.